Hey everybody, John Wagdon here with DevCentral and we are bringing you another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about the issue with visibility and TLS or SSL encryption. Uh, and I guess the bottom line is, or the fundamental issue is that when you encrypt traffic, uh, you could of course see it, you just can't read it. So there, there effectively is no visibility on that traffic. Um, so I'm going to outline a little bit of an issue here, and then we're going to kind of build into um, a, a solution that needs to take place to, to be able to get around this or to, to solve this problem. So ultimately, uh, you have a web application out here that you want everybody uh, to, you know, to visit every day, or maybe you have a whole bunch of these. I'll put, you know, a, kind of a few of them out here, whatever. So you've got the web application that you want your users to access, uh, and you've got, you know, users out here. Um, you know, user traffic out here in the, in the internet that is coming into your web application. So what a lot of companies will do um, is they'll set up, you know, various services that they want that traffic to come through before it's allowed to get to their web application. Because they want to look at the traffic, is it legitimate, is it a, you know, is this some kind of an attack, does it have malware in it, just that kind of stuff. Um, but the fundamental problem that we wanted to talk about again today is this issue of encryption and how that, uh, re that, that, that takes away the visibility of you being able to look at your traffic. So one question you may ask is, well, how much of this user traffic today is encrypted? Um, and the answer is, I guess we don't know 100% for sure, uh, but there's been uh, a lot of different reports that have been done on this. In fact, our own F5 Labs team did a report on this last year. Uh, and they show that uh, 80 plus percent, so I'll put 80 percent uh, plus traf uh, web traffic just in general today is encrypted. Um, I looked at Google and based on what Google is, um, is capable of looking at, which is a ton of internet traffic today, uh, they have this uh, Google transparency report that they, uh, that they uh, actually have out there all the time. You can go out there and look at it whenever you want. They're showing that as of today, uh, they're looking at like 90% uh, plus. And, uh, and that's, you know, so that's, that's looking at several different things. But the, the point is, you know, 80 to 90% of all internet traffic today is encrypted. Uh, and of course, most of this is uh, HTTP traffic or HTTPS, uh, encrypted traffic uh, on the HTTP protocol. Um, you know, this, this web traffic that comes in, but you may have some other applications that are not um, HTTP. There may be other things like, you know, SMTP or maybe, uh, you know, IMAP or um, you may have like uh, FTP, you know, other protocols that you use. Um, certainly HTTP can be encrypted uh, via TLS or SSL, now TLS, uh, you know, with this HTTPS protocol. But there's, uh, there's this other stuff uh, called opportunistic encryption or opportunistic TLS that some of these other protocols like SMTP, IMAP, FTP, POP3, there's others that use this. And essentially what happens is uh, between the client and server that are talking over these other protocols, you could have the client and server start the communication in clear text. It's all unencrypted. And then there is this start TLS command that's allowed to be infused, as it were, into these various protocols that effectively takes the communication from unencrypted to encrypted. So now uh, these various protocols that may not have been otherwise encrypted are now uh, jumping up into a TLS encrypted um, channel. So, uh, so nonetheless, you have a lot of different protocols running across the network, um, you know, accessing your web applications, and, uh, and it's all encrypted traffic. So some of the things that different organizations would want to do is maybe send this traffic through uh, some kind of like sandbox um, service. Uh, maybe you got some like artificial intelligence service. Maybe you've got some, some kind of malware uh, detection um, service. Maybe you've got you know, various others. Maybe there's like an intrusion prevention system or things like that. So as user traffic comes in, you want to send it through various things like this before it gets to your web application so that you can check it out and make sure it's okay. One of the issues with this is how do you decrypt this traffic uh, before you send it through these various devices or these various services? Uh, because the point is you have to decrypt it in order for these things to do the great work that they do. Um, some people would say, well, you need to 
send it to, say, this first one, decrypt it here, let this uh, service or this feature you know, do its thing, and then re-encrypt it, and then send it to the next thing, decrypt it, re-encrypt it, send it to the next thing. So it's like this daisy chain of services, as it were, but you have to decrypt and then re-encrypt and then decrypt and then re-encrypt and all that stuff. And that just adds latency, it adds a lot of problems. Um, it's, uh, it's also, it also you know, adds, adds uh, various complexity in terms of the types of encryption that you may use. One thing that, uh, that some attackers will go after are these various cipher suites, uh, you know, because not all encryption is built the same. So depending on what kind of encryption you choose to use, um, you know, we'll, we'll either open up a door or maybe not for various attackers to take advantage of to say, hey, if you use a certain kind of encryption or decryption here, um, then that may give me an avenue to go after that vulnerable cipher suite um, so it, it and then and then cause problems. Maybe attack that vulnerability in that specific cipher suite. Then I can possibly decrypt, and then I've got all your traffic, and you know bad things happen. Um, so it creates if if you do this daisy chaining effect, uh, not only does it create uh, latency, it slows things down. It's it's a but it's also a mess in terms of keeping management of all the different encryption keys that you've got to mess with. You know, do you use a different key for each one of these? Do you use the same key and just share it across all of them? Um, we've, we've done some other light boards on uh, TLS 1.3 um, that actually is out now and it's, it's going to be adopted as we move forward in, the, you know, in, in time. More and more applications and, and browsers and all that are going to move to TLS 1.3 and that forces perfect forward secret ciphers. It's, it mandates that. Uh, and in that case, you cannot share a key across all these devices. You have to figure out a way to, uh, to let these things do what they need to do. Uh, but there is no key sharing. So, um, so anyway, so you've got this idea of, of you know, user traffic coming into these various uh, devices before it ultimately gets back here to your web application. Um, the question is, how do I manage all that stuff? And, and in, in addition to that, one of the things I would mention is not all traffic that comes in to this, you know, security stack, as it were, uh, maybe you don't want every bit of that traffic to visit every single one of these devices or these services. Maybe you want, you know, your HTTP traffic to go to three of them but not four or, you know, whatever it is. Um, how do you deal with that stuff? How do you intelligently, uh, you know, uh, route this traffic through the various devices that you have? So it creates this issue. Um, the solution to this we'll get into in a future video, but I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to highlight the issue here of user traffic or internet traffic today uh, being encrypted at an extremely high percentage rate, and that's only going to grow. In fact, if you talk to, if you ask Google, uh, they, their goal in life is to encrypt everything. So, so their, their focus, their end state is that everything will be encrypted. So, uh, so I mean, this not, even at 90%, they would say, we're not quite there yet. We need to keep going and encrypt it all. So, um, so again, this is an issue for organizations out there. You need to figure out a way uh, to decrypt your user traffic so that you can send it through your various security services, your various security features, and then, uh, and then frankly, you can either re-encrypt or not uh, as you send it back to your web application. A lot of people want to re-encrypt it because they want um, sort of that end-to-end -end encryption uh, from user all the way back to web application. Um, so F5's got some really cool solutions around this, and we'll get, that, we'll get to that in, uh, in a future video. But again, I wanted to highlight the issue here of, uh, of TLS traffic that is just pervasive on the internet today. And, uh, and some of the issues that may, that may rise from that. So, uh, so thanks for watching uh, this, uh, this latest issue of Lightboard Lessons uh, with us today. Hey, if you like this, you can click right up here on our DC ball and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.